Hi guys, it's John again and the July update has come out for the S22 Ultra. So you know what that means, it's time to put both the XR2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to the test. So you can see here the software versions on the screen at the moment and I only noticed that the Snapdragon got its update today, the Exynos got its a few days ago. So you can see here now they are both on the July update. So we're going to run through the tests as normal and just see how they both do. Now I've got these set to both be 80% brightness because it's actually quite warm here in the UK at the moment, it's around 24, 25 degrees in this room. So we don't want the phones to burn out and get too overheated. We do obviously have the floating thermal monitor widget here displaying the temperature. We have started at 100% battery on both and you can see they've both just dropped to 99%. All the other settings are the same, we're now on a Wi-Fi 6 network, not that really makes a difference in, that, in this test particularly. Let's get on with the test and see how they both do. Okay, so the Geekbench CPU test has finished and we can see here after the three tests, we've got some rather interesting results for the Exynos. You can see compared to last month, this is a decrease of a minus 11% on the single core. You can see that test three there, it did really poorly, score of 682, which is somewhat worrying really that after, you know, just three tests, it did go down that much. You can see there the temperature as well, went from 35 to 39. It's only a 4% increase, which is the same as the Snapdragon, but yeah, overall it is a nasty dip there on test number three. So these are both on optimized. Now, a lot of people do comment and say, why don't you stick them on high performance mode? And that's not what we've done really throughout the tests that I have done on here. This is how your phone comes out of the box, aside from the fact I have disabled the game optimizing service. That doesn't even affect the benchmarks. But yeah, this is your phone out of the box with the July update installed, and this is what you're gonna get. But anyway, we can see here a nice win there for the Snapdragon with a single core of 1232. That's a very small increase of nearly 1% there on the single core. The Exynos does still managed to win in the mod core, and even with an abysmal test three, it still managed a score of 3041 for its mod core compared to the Snapdragon's 3009. So you can see here the Snapdragon's still scoring just over 3000 on its mod cores, so the Exynos is still winning in that department. Okay, so we'll move on to the Geekbench Compute test now, and we'll see how they get on there. So next up we have the Geekbench Compute results here, and we can see that the Exynos is still winning by quite a way, and in fact it's actually had a near 6% increase in its average score compared to last month, so that's nice to see. We didn't have too much of an increase in temperature either, just a single degree there, starting from 36. Snapdragon as well, very solid results here, but still over 2,000 less on average compared to the Exynos 2200. Right, let's move on to the Antutu benchmark test and we'll see how they both compare. Okay, so next up we are on the Antutu test, and this is the latest version at the time of recording, which is 9.4.1. And we can see here that the Exynos is still struggling here with a score of 829,000 being its best and 784,000 being its worst 
Compared to the Snapdragon here, we can see it's winning by a comfortable margin with an average score nearly 40,000 more than the 2200. We can see here another decrease here for the Exynos, 3.37%. Now don't forget the temperature in the UK is quite hot at the moment, so that could be affecting things. But they are both running at around 40 degrees, so it's not massively different to what it was last month, but uh, it's interesting to see there has been that slight decrease. Okay, so it's on to the Antutu stress test now, so let's see how they both compare. Okay, so moving on to the stress test now and some very strange results here on the Exynos. So we've got June's update down here at the bottom. So we have a look at July though, we can see here in the first test we've had some problems here with the CPU performance, both sort of halfway through and towards the end of the test. Last month we didn't see any of those sorts of issues particularly. But we can see here that the cores as well have been clocked down here and then clocked back up a tiny bit. There's a bit of a blip here before they go back down to the one gigahertz mark. So that's quite poor really considering last month we didn't see anything really get anywhere close to that. There's a few blips here and there, but uh, the Core 7 was well around the sort of two gigahertz mark. So yeah, it's definitely uh, been struggling here in its first test. The second test, however, it seems a bit better. We can see that there's a massive, there's a very hard lock here at around the 1.6 gigahertz mark on Core 7. And that has meant that the performance has stayed pretty consistent, as you can see here, at around 80%. But that obviously is meaning that the speed of the CPU is running a lot slower. Now if we have a look here in June's second test, we can see the core was reasonably okay at around two gigahertz, just dipping a bit at the end there, and the performance kept up as well. So the fact that we've got steady performance with a lower clock, you can see that was achievable really, in the previous update too. Maybe not as steady a line in the performance, but well over 90% for most of the test here. So the third and final test on the XR2200, we can see again, this very steady bit of performance here at around the 65% mark. So it has gone down quite a bit, as you can see from 80 to 60, so that's 20% dip in performance. And again, this lock here on the cores to keep it, uh, I guess, performing more stable. But again, compared to last month's third test, apart from this dip down here, we saw much better performance and speed overall. So next up we have the Snapdragon, and again we've got June's update down here and July's at the top here. So the Snapdragon is pretty good really with the stress tests here, apart from the fact it's very sort of messy, jumping up and down all over the place, it does stay consistently above the 60% mark here throughout test one. Cores as well, we've seen much better stabilization of the cores in previous updates, but overall it's you know not too dissimilar to last month. I'd say there's a bit more clocking down below the 60 line here. In fact, there's a lot more. There's only did it once in the June update, but we have got a lot more down to 60. But in comparison to the Exynos, it's performing much, much better. Very similar for test number two here, and we can see Although we do have more dips down to 60, it is actually a bit better, I'd say, than the second test from last month, because you can see here the peaks were not going anywhere near 80. And here in test number two, we're going well over 80, up to 100 sometimes, but normally hovering around sort of 90% performance mark. So definitely a much better set of results here for test two in July. And then we go back down to a sort of worse test here in test three compared to June's, where we had overall a higher performance towards the end of the test. You can see here, it was hovering around the sort of 75 to 80. Here though, we are back down to the 60% mark, but I think overall considering the heat and everything, I'd still say the Snapdragon has performed a lot better than the Exynos. Right, let's move on to the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test now and see how they both do.
Right next up was a wildlife extreme stress test and we can see here there's been a couple of changes here so the best loop and the lowest loop now go to the snapdragon with a score of 2057 and 1234. The stability still goes to the Exynos but I would imagine that's because it is doing this clocking restricting the cores so that it doesn't uh, get too hot. I haven't had any overheating problems with the Exynos but it does seem that maybe Samsung think that it's the best idea to clock the cores a bit because that seems to be what's happening certainly if those Antutu stress tests or anything to go by. But anyway we'll move on to the slingshot extreme test now and we'll see how it gets on. So here are the Slingshot Extreme results and the only change here is that Test 2 has now been awarded to the Snapdragon compared to last month where the Exynos managed to beat it. So we can see here there's not a huge amount in the scores here, 57 versus 54, 27 versus 31 for the first graphics tests and still the Exynos is beating the Snapdragon with all of the physics tests. Again not by a huge amount but enough that it does win quite comfortably. We do however see a decrease of nearly 7% in the Exynos, whereas the Snapdragon has only decreased by about 2.4%. Now we don't want to see any decreases really if possible, but uh, you can see here that both phones have been reasonably warm here, but they do both stick at around 41 degrees on test three, which is where they must both be sort of clocking down a bit, as you can see from the results in the FPS. So here are all the results if you want to go through them quickly. It's now a more even match here. We've got six wins for the Exynos and six wins for the Snapdragon. Now if we compare that to a couple of months ago where we had nine wins for the Exynos and three for the Snapdragon. You can see here it's really uh, starting to turn around a bit for the Snapdragon. So it's good to see that things are improving. One thing to bear in mind though after all these tests and the reason I still use the Exynos as my daily phone is the battery life. So we can see here the Exynos has finished with 48% battery remaining and the Snapdragon has finished with only 40%. So that's 8% difference there with the exact same test running and if anything the Exynos doing a bit more in the background than the Snapdragon because as you can see it's got WhatsApp and all sorts of things running in the background which my Snapdragon doesn't have. So that is still the reason I'm sticking with the Exynos for the time being as the battery life is still much better. I will be doing another battery drain test and we'll put them head to head properly with some apps and games and stuff just to see exactly how they do in sort of normal use. But yeah, that's my thoughts on the battery life as it currently stands. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Hopefully you are all getting better scores than me. You always seem to. So I hope that is a continuing trend. Let me know what they are down below. As always, it's interesting to see how other people are getting on with theirs. We are going through a bit of a heat wave here in the UK, so that's certainly not helping things. But hopefully as winter comes in, things will start to cool down a bit. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like and subscribe. Don't forget you can click on the join button if you want to become a member and that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.